What is up, Darsizzle Nation? If you're new to the channel, my name is Darsizzle, and you're watching Darsizzle Offshore. And in today's video, I ended up catching a beautiful peacock bass literally in my backyard. And I ended up cleaning the fish, getting them all prepped and filleted, and now my dad and I are going to try peacock bass for the first time ever. All right, y'all. Hopefully, I have the magic touch today. I am bringing my arsenal of rods with me to the backyard. But the goal is to catch that peacock bass. And I've never tasted one before, and I've seen actually some other YouTubers trying peacock bass, and just people in general said they're actually really good to eat. So it would be cool to catch one on my artificials right now, and, um, and then we could go ahead and do a cook and catch. Catch and cook, I always say that backwards. <laughs> but um, today, we're just gonna have to see how it goes. There's, we got some nice cloud cover right now, so hopefully that'll help me catch some fish. Um, let's see what I'm gonna start out with. I think I'm gonna start with this bait, which is Gambler, little easy swimmer in the Tennessee Retriever color with a little tungsten weight on it. Oh man, they are spooking a lot of bait over here. I think I'm gonna get a fish right now, guys. Come on. They are pushing bait right into the middle. Hey, all right. Little fish for me. Score for the win. <laughs> well, not really. I mean, the fish is a fish, I'm not complaining, but there are peacock bass back here that I want to catch. Cute little guy. He just ate my Tennessee Retriever, little easy. But there is peacock bass straight out there. They're working in little baits. But this guy's a little cute guy. He's healthy little bass. All right, releasing him. I really want a peacock though. Come on, fish gods. Work with me, work with me. All right, here we go. Just barely bury the hook like that. And let's see if I can get another fish. I'm not sure what it is. Come on. Woo, 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 this thing is fighting good. Oh, I got a solid fish. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, it's not a peacock bass, but hey, I'll take it. Sweet, check him out. He just slayed. I just switched up my colors here, my gambler lure, but he just slayed the Copperfield color. Nice, right in the corner of the mouth. Perfect. Check it out. I'll give you get you in the sun. There we go. Nice fish. Awesome. He's beautiful too. He is all lit up. Gorgeous little fish. And he put up a heck of a fight too. I didn't think I had him on for a second there. But hey, we got one largemouth. Not skunked yet. Now I just got to get my peacock bass. But hey, I'll take it. I'm not complaining and I got him right over there at that you see like that piece of wood in the water that's exactly where he ate it so he saw a little chunk two pounder all right back you go all right maybe that means that I'm gonna catch a fish now <laughs> catch some more fish now all right and I am using the weighted one eighth the weighted um, swim bait mustad hook and kind of just lining it up and putting it right back through there just like that and you just want to like barely I just put the the barb just a little bit into the plastic not a lot but just a little so that way it kind of makes it weedless for me and uh, if I do catch a big fish you know then I can set the hook on them and um, and that's just a little trick that I like to do seems to work for me I got my tip wrapped okay not so bad, not so bad. I think that's a good color. Now, let's catch some more fish. Later in the afternoon, guys, I'm back out here. It was too hot before, but you can see I have all my rods set up. I think I have a good feeling this time that I'll probably catch a peacock bass. Do you really want to eat them? I'm very hungry. So let's try to get this done. I'm gonna use my top water real quick, and then I'm gonna try and fish the branches over there on my dock. Let's see if I can get a fish that way. All right, wish me luck, guys. We gotta catch a fish, we gotta catch a fish.
Last resort, taking my shiner over to my tree. See if I can get a fish. All right, putting my shiner right in the water here. And he usually just hangs out like right underneath our, I've seen him multiple times this past week and he hangs out right underneath this dock. I think there's other peacocks here too, honestly, but there's one in particular that's a decent size I've been trying to catch, trying to spook him out. Come on, fishy. Got him, I got him, I got him. Oh boy, oh boy. All right, stay away from that, stay away from that, buddy. Oh boy. I don't have a net. I'm just gonna have to try to land them. Come on, baby, stay on the hook. Go back. Okay. Boom! I got the pig that's been hanging out underneath my dock the whole week. Finally. And I just had to lure him out with a live bait. But hey, I got him. I don't care. Wow, he's a stud. I don't even know how I got him out of the trees there, but I managed to. All right guys, this is a solid peacock bass for the backyard, definitely. And last time this year, I was catching them right here in my backyard too. So for some reason, they move into our canal back here this time of the year, and there's a lot of them. And this guy is a solid three pounder at least. So now it's time for the cook portion of this video, and we're gonna cook this beautiful fish for dinner and see how he tastes. Now it's time for the fillet portion of this video, guys, and I am very hungry, so I need to fillet this fish quick, and Brian's rushing me, he's telling me to hurry up, so I need to get this done. But I just wanted to show you what I'm using today. I am using my 10-inch sharpening steel, which I already sharpened. I don't want to show you guys that because that's uh, a little off boring. But I'm using my bubble blade knife, which is the 7-inch tapered flex knife. I really love this knife, and I, it's, the, it's the knife I resort to with any kind of fish I fillet. And um, if, it, if you know I have a bigger fish to fillet, then I'll use a bigger blade. But this one is perfect for all-around use. And I also wanted to mention my fish hook and anchor bracelets that I'm wearing. You can see I'm wearing my patriotic colors for my brother Connor. And I've also got other colors over here as well. Breast Cancer Awareness Month and um, curved anchor bracelets and all that good stuff. And I make all different sizes for adults and children. And you can find that link down in the description below. I will provide links. But I custom make these. So if you want to support this channel, I would highly recommend checking these out if you're interested. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start filleting this fish here, and it's just like any other fish. I've never filleted a peacock bass before, so we're, I don't really know what to expect as far as the meat goes. So I'm just going to do it like any other fish. Pretty simple. But I'm excited to see what the meat looks like, and I really don't know what to expect about the taste, so we're just going to have to find this out together. Check out the meat on that filet, guys. That is some white looking meat. That looks really good, actually. That should be delicious. Wow, I'm really shocked. And he's got a lot of bones right here in his rib cage, so I didn't really, I just went over those and left those intact. I don't want to open up his belly or his guts. But that's one side, awesome. All right, this fish is filleted. Now I just gotta skin them. But guys, if you haven't seen any of my fillet videos, I'm not gonna give you, you know, detailed instructions on this, but if you wanna check out my previous videos, I do have how to fillet videos that you can check out and uh, I just provide you in-depth, step-by-step instructions on what to do with certain fish. And um, this kind of fillet that I'm doing is, is standard for all types of fish. It doesn't matter whether, whether it's bass or crappie, panfish, whatever you wanna call them. Um, you know, snap or group or any, anything, you can use this method. And I'm getting the pin bones out right now. You don't want to eat those pin bones. And majority of fish have pin bones located right there. All right, guys, check out this awesome white meat. Look at it. I mean, it looks like a normal snapper or grouper that you would catch offshore, and it looks really edible and delicious. So I'm actually quite excited to taste this guy, and he's actually a lot of meat on him too. So pretty stoked. And once again, if you guys want to check out my how-to fillet videos, you need to just search on my channel, fillet, or you can even look for a playlist on my channel that I have dedicated to how to clean fish and fillet fish and all that great stuff. So guys, check that out. And if you're interested in the bubble blade products check that out below too all right now it's time to go in the house and cook this guy up 
Because I'm such a much better cook than Darcizzle, I'm gonna cook off this bass so she doesn't ruin it. What do you say? <laughs> I disagree. And the first time I try a fish, I just like to put it in, in a simple pan with some uh, salt and pepper and a little bit of butter because you know I want to taste the fish. I want you know, I want to see how that fish tastes and not just put on all sorts of toppings and fry it and, and uh, bread it and put it in a soup. So we're gonna just fry this up real quick, put some salt and yeah. pepper on, right? Yeah, so keep it simple, salt and pepper, and you actually, right, like you said, you can taste the fish. So that's what we wanna do, and it looks great, so I think we're gonna have no issues. I think it's gonna be awesome, I think. We're gonna try it together and cook it together. Right, all right, so I got a pan right here. It's uh, heating up, we're gonna put some butter in, yep. and she's in charge of the salt and pepper usually. Yes, I actually still have to rinse this fish off. I did not do it yet. But another tip, guys, is you know don't rinse your fish with fresh water. It doesn't matter what kind of fish, whether it's a saltwater or freshwater fish, don't rinse it off in fresh water until you're ready to cook it. Um, and there's, that's just a tip. I'm not going to get into it. Something with the osmosis, and um, it's just going to make your fish taste a lot better. I decided to do one fillet with Magic Seasoning Blend, the seafood magic. It's actually pretty good. It gives a little bit of like a little spicy kick to it. And then the other one will be salt and pepper. All right, I can see it up. Those are some big fillets. I didn't think that bass yeah. is big. We might be eating more bass around here. They're white and yeah. they're big. It looks Pretty really, exciting. really good. And I'm shocked at the amount of meat that's there. I didn't think that would... That's a solid piece of meat right there, guys. I mean, I didn't think that would come off a peacock bass, but it certainly did. So, but uh, usually 10 minutes an inch uh, for fish and a lot of stuff. So, you know, I'll put it off for three minutes. I like to put a timer on so I know when to flip it. So that's it. Also, you can look at the edges. See how they get white around the edges? That's when I know to flip it. I want to tell you about another little trick I learned from cooking fish. Is that almost like you know, like you stick a toothpick in brownies. You can stick a fork in the fish until it's done. If it, you know, if it hits like raw meat. Then, you know, it's not done all the way, but like these, you know, just kind of pulp the slides through. With a little bit of practice, you'll see it works pretty good. All right, Our fish is all cooked, ready to go, thanks to Chef Brian. And now we got to taste our peacock bass. But Brian and I, we have never tried a bass ever. Never a large mouth, never a peacock. So this is going to be interesting, and I really can't believe we haven't after all the fish we eat over time, and it's just, it's crazy. So um, let's go ahead and try it. Isn't that kind of like redneck food, like alligators, frogs, and Garb. black bass? <laughs> I guess so. I'm from New York. I know, you know, like, well, let's go ahead and try the fish, and then I guess we'll be the judge. See, yeah, let you guys know what we think about it. All right, let's do it. I made mine into a sandwich. <laughs> I haven't had lunch yet. <laughs> yeah, he's got to see. He's. I'll go last. That looks really good. Why are you gonna go last? You can't. Okay, I'll go at once. Whoa. Very good. Well, that's pretty good. Firm. Yeah. Yeah. You try it's very similar to any kind of snapper. Not so much like yellowtail snapper, more like. It's firmer than that. It's firmer, yeah. firmer than that? Mm -hmm. It's firmer than yellowtail and mahi. It's good. Mmm. Mm hmm. You can really taste it. It really, like, not fishy whatsoever. It's just really tender, firm, but like tender at the same time, and it's really good. It's got some bones, filet uh -oh. girl. Uh oh. A little baby one. Oops. <laughs> yeah. So we've been on. We've been, I've never. <laughs> I've never had bass before, but you know, here in South Florida, most people don't eat a lot of bass because we have a. You know, this is from a canal in our backyard, all right? Right. And we have the sewers, right? We don't. You know, we we have cesspools, not sewer system. And so there's all kinds of stuff going in there. There's mercury and lead and everything else. So they really don't recommend that you eat bass out of the canals around here. Yeah. And it doesn't look like you should either, frankly, from looking at the canal. But again, don't bug out everybody. One bass out of the backyard is not going to kill us. Right. And uh, so that, it's really good. And, yeah, I mean, you guys saw the filet. He was, he was fine. He had no worms, nothing in him. But, you know, one bass, like he said, is not going to kill us. But I know, like, our friend, like, Lisa Pot, who, Lisa Pot, who grew up down here in South Florida, she used to eat fish all the time growing up. So back in the day, it was safe. 
but not so much not so much anymore. So too many New Yorkers. Yeah, but <laughs> this bass is good, and honestly, I wish we had like quality water down here, or else I'd be eating bass like every day. Like this is really good, awesome. Well, guys, you're going to have to, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to finish this whole thing in front of you because that's boring, but Brian is. <laughs> but, guys, if you like this catch and cook, let us know in the comments down below. And actually, um, let us know what you want us to cook next, catch and cook next. Whatever that might be, comment it down below. Let us know what you want. And the person, well, the comments that have one particular fish, whichever one, we're going to pick that one. So guys, make sure you comment, make sure you engage with us down below in the comment section and let us know what you think and what the next catch and cook should be. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. We appreciate you as always. It was really cool catching that fish in the backyard. Going to have to do that more often. So until our next adventure, follow, follow your dreams, dreams and, and keep, keep on catching. catching. Woo! This is gonna be the first bass both Brian and I have ever tried or ate. We've never eaten, eat, ate, eaten. <laughs> <laughs>